Hey guys, I'm in my office today and I have a special treat for you. Can you guess what is in the box? I'll give you a hint. Its gross weight is 15 pounds. I've done toy unboxings before and I've done supplier unboxings before. Today though, I'm going to combine the two and do something a little different. If you guessed that there's only one die-cast model in this box, you would be correct. There is only one. This gigantic, humongous box right here only has one model in it. See, there ain't a whole lot of extra space in this box either beside that model. So let's go on and carefully pull this box out. Oh my gosh. See, and it is, I told you, 15 pounds. This baby is heavy. Look at that. Ain't that huge. Oh, one model in this box. Now the outer dimensions of this box are 19.1 inches by 17.25 inches by 17.32 inches. And you saw that this box nearly filled it set that aside there. Look at that. Isn't that big? Let me get a measurement and let's measure this one too. Still haven't guessed what's in the box. The box is 20 and a quarter by 13 and a quarter by 12 and a half. That is a massive box for one single toy. <sighs> What do you bet we're going to run into quite a bit of styrofoam when we open this box? Because can you imagine one toy being that big? Well, let's see. Let's open him up. It is. In case you didn't know, I, I, I may, may have been able to show you off here. It is. By that tape on the end, you can tell this is a Diecast Masters piece. It's a Diecast Masters seal with an item number of 85 515. So if you want to go Google that, you can figure out what it is real quick or just wait around and we'll see the model by itself. Yep, I was right. Styrofoam inside. Big, big, big block of styrofoam right there. But let's go on and get him out of this. And of course, they taped the styrofoam together. Sure. It's going to be easy to open and pull this guy out. Let's just let him slide out here. Oh, it's not getting any lighter. Oh, look at that. Ain't that impressive. You'll notice it's not a solid styrofoam. they got a big hole in it. Let's cut him open here. Straight down here, down there. Let's get to the other side. Turn him over again. Let's get to the other side. Hmm. Turn him open. Be careful when using these. You don't want to, you know, hurt your model in any way. Slay him down one way or the other. I guess it really don't matter at this point. Because I see there's another box on the inside. Do you see it right there? Oh, Well-packed models. Good job, Diecast Masters. Hmm. Wow, who would have thought? This is a metal tin. It is not cardboard, it's actually metal. Wow, that's pretty cool. Thought you there's some more styrofoam on the inside. And to protect the tin, they put it in this uh, canvas bag, which is really, really nice. So often they do not so often they do not protect the box inside, but it's real nice that Diecast Masters went on and put it in a very nice canvas bag. Really, really nice. Man, all this just to get into the model. <laughs> Let's hope it's worth it. I have a feeling though, from the pictures I've seen of this, I've only ever seen a picture of this model, but I do believe it's gonna be worth it. Now look at this, metal tin 
It's the Diecast Masters Highline Series. You can see it's got the Diecast Masters logo, the Highline Series, and the item number. On that end, and same on the other end. Underneath, let's see here. Oh, better turn it over so you can see it the right way, huh? What do you think? Underneath, it has cat information, Diecast Masters logos, etc. Really nice piece, plus the barcode. This side of the tin, that is a picture of the model. Not the real machine, that's the model. And ooh, isn't that cool? We go up to the front. Let's see, this is the top of the lid. Picture of the real machine, hidden that huge, the amazing Caterpillar 795F. A big, monstrous machine. Then on the other side of the tin, it's got a picture of the real machine, plus it's got the specifications of it massive massive machine now let's go on and pull this lid off which probably won't be any easier these lids are usually fairly tight if you ever open 10 10 lids here you'll find that out kind of the hard way but it is a nice nice piece up oh, lid really cool and what do i find inside well how do you know Starts off with, they included a cat diecast masters catalog. I see we've come across some more styrofoam foam material. Helps protect the model really well. And here it is. A little piece of plastic to protect the lid. And then it looks like they put a piece of static cling plastic on top of the bed in order to protect the bed. That is another nice feature. They have done amazing on this packaging. Let's see if we can get him out of here. Carefully be careful how you lift these guys because he's kind of stiff in the in there. You don't want to grab by the handrails or any of the delicate parts. And they want to make him tight in here so that he doesn't uh, actually, you know, get broken. Oh, and there we go, bringing him out. That giant box for this model, which is approximately one foot long, 12 inches. Wow, all of that for a single die cast model. But the real Caterpillar 795F AC mining truck is a massive machine in real life. So it makes sense that the model would also be massive in 150th scale. That is 150th scale, guys. I'll have to put it on a scale later to find out exactly how much the model weighs for all we knew the gross weight of the box was 15 pounds but stay tuned to find out what the model itself weighs now let's go on and compare the model to the real one i actually have a copy of the cat brochure on the real 795 f ac machine and we'll compare the features on the real machine to this model that should be pretty cool Got my brochure here so we can go on and talk about the model versus the real one <sighs> lifting this guy up he is actually quite heavy oh, let's lift this up first and raise up the bed and you want to do that carefully because it's a multi-stage piston on the model just like the real one and you don't want to overextend it you also don't want to work it too fast because you don't want to damage it. The real truck has a CAT C175-16 diesel engine. <laughs> this engine is rated at 3,400 horsepower from its 85 liter displacement and four turbochargers. And they've got that motor visible right here, completely detailed out right there. Wow, that's impressive. The powertrain is a CAT AC electric drive. You can see all of this electric drive units and generator and components here. And that powertrain is 100% Caterpillar designed and supported. The electric drive motors power the wheels through a double reduction final drive. And we can see that better up here than we can underneath. Motors and other parts. The traction generator 
which I believe is right here, is chassis mounted and is a three phase two bearing design. This is an AC powered unit, but it rectifies it to DC, then inverts it back to AC because the way the traction motors work when it is in a retard mode going downhill, it actually ends up with a very, very much like your um, cars. It uses the braking and turns the motors into generators going the other direction. But underneath, we can see here the rear axle, which is the final drives, the motors, which are up inside, and other parts underneath of that electric drive unit. Really, really awesome job that they have done detailing out this model. And heavy. <laughs> it is a die cast piece. Of course, there are some plastic parts on it and some rubber hoses, like you would expect. Mud flaps being rubber. Uh, hoses here are soft rubber, and then it's got some, you know, like the mirrors are plastic. But the handrailing is actually brass. All right, now let's turn him around so we can look at the cab next. All right, there's the cab. How about that? The comfortable cab is spacious and quiet. In fact, with proper maintenance and closed doors and windows, the cab has a noise level of 76 dB, which is comparable to the cabin of a passenger car or truck. In an open station situation though, where the operator has the doors and windows open, hearing protection is recommended for the operator. The cab also offers excellent visibility with intuitive controls. And Diecast Masters did a great job replicating the intuitive controls and the entire interior. Interior features on the real one are replicated here on this model, including the air suspension driver's seat, a full-size trainer's seat on the other side, the steering wheel, control levers, displays and gauges on the dashboard, all inside there, and windows. Talk about cool that they got all of that detail inside this cab. They also have mirrors here. One of them's folded over, and then this one was folded over. They are, so the driver has that excellent visibility. Just be careful with them on the model. You don't want to break them. The rear suspension system is a four-bar link type that directs more of an even load distribution to the main frame of the truck. Of course, this model has nice, nice soft rubber tires, just like the real one. The front suspension has a large diameter cylinders that serve as the steering kingpins for a tight turning radius. The steering system consists of hydraulic cylinders moving a single tie rod to reduce maintenance. You can see the hydraulic cylinders are here and the tie rod there so that it is simple simple steering and the large cylinders right there wow impressive the way they did that cat offers several body options but this one comes with a gateless coal body which eliminates the problematic tailgates however it is intended for coal haulage only the gateless coal body has a capacity of 460 cubic yards back here you will find the bumper service center, which features a lockout tag, battery box, and disconnects for the battery and the powertrain on the real one. They replicated that pretty nice on this model. Here and here, it has sealer electrical connectors, and they're designed to keep dust and moisture out of the connectors. The ingress and egress utilize a 24 inch wide stairway that has handrails for the operator safety. And along with those handrails, you can see the mirrors are mounted to aid in his visibility and safety. And by the way, these handrails are brass. They are metal handrails. They're not plastic like we're used to on them. And this little guy will fold down, but I'm not gonna do it because he has to go back in the box. The tires are 5680R63 and 5980R63 with an approved tire loading for the rated GVW, the gross vehicle weight of 
257,000 pounds. Incidentally, guys, the truck has a 345 ton payload capacity and fully loaded, it can travel at 40 miles per hour top speed. That is impressive. Now let's go on and compare the dimensions of the model to the real machine. The overall length of the real machine is 49 feet 9 inches. The overall length of this model is 12 inches. The wheelbase is 22 feet 1 inch. And the wheelbase of the model here, guys, is 5.25 inches, 5 and a quarter inches. The loading height, that's with the bed down, is 23 feet 2 inches. On the model, the loading height is 5 and 3 quarter inches tall. And that is impressively massive. The outside body width, that is without these two covers for the canopy, that's just the outside width of the body, is on the real machine, 29 feet 5 inches. The model here, we have 6 and 3 quarters inches. That is a massive, massive model. And a final note, the weight of the Diecast Masters CAT 797F AC model is... I wonder how close any of your guesses are. Drop them in the comments while I get to scale and we weigh it out. Zero my scale, so we got it zeroed out. It is, it is set for pounds, guys, so let's put them on there and see what that number brings up. I'm betting it's going to be probably 14 pounds. Six point eight five pounds. Wow, from a fifteen pound gross weight all the way down to a six point eight pound tear weight. That means the packaging is quite heavy on this model, but that's a good thing. It will very well protect it during shipment or transfer. That is impressive. Uh, I'm kind of shocked. Six point eight, six point eight five, six point nine pounds. I really thought it would have been a little heavier than that. Just to show how massive this model is. I've got the first gear Construction Pioneer Series superb release of their International 350 pay hauler in 1 25th scale right here. The International 350 pay hauler is only a 50 ton capacity machine while the CAT 795F AC is a 345 ton capacity machine. You look at how close they are in physical dimensions, even though the pay hauler is scaled twice as big as the 795F. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel so you can see the video that I'm going to do shortly on the International 350 pay hauler. Like I said, the Diecast Masters model of the Caterpillar 795F AC mining truck is massive. And I hope its new owner is happy. Unfortunately, guys, this particular model, the 795 FAC unit, is sold out. However, I do actually happen to have its mechanical brother, the Caterpillar 797 F mining truck, available over on my website, farmtoysandmore.com. There's a link to it down in the description below. Also, with another link in the description below, I have the copy of the PDF version of the Caterpillar 795FAC brochure, and you can download that with the link down there. If you're a construction collector or just a Caterpillar collector, I do carry the entire current line of the Diecast Masters Caterpillar models over on my website. And that's got all of them. Go on over there and check it out. Farmtoysandmore.com. Links down below. It goes direct to the Diecast Master stuff. And if there is a Caterpillar piece that isn't available today, go on and find me at my socials. 
one of them, Instagram or Facebook, the links are down below, and message me. And maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to come up with the one that you're looking for. And I'll, as I do, go out and look for toys from time to time. Maybe I'll get lucky and I can get it for you. Just message me and let me know. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please go on and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back soon with another Diecast Model Review.